I'm very, very uh, happy to be welcoming you to this uh, Eurocree webinar. Uh, we have a series of continuous uh, webinars, which I think it's uh, quite interesting to do. And today I would like to uh, say a special welcome to John, who's going to present some very interesting stuff for us, I hope. My name is Mats Kalbeck. I'm from Örebro University in Sweden and I'm the Director of Education at Eurocree at present. So today's topic I think is both exciting in terms of uh, it's looking forward, it's uh, into the future in my point of view. It's also a very timely topic because we're all planning to uh, rearrange our courses and our uh, outlines as well, so it will come in very handy. And by that, I'm actually going to let uh, the stage over to you, John, because uh, I know you can talk and uh, <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very keen on uh, listening into you. And may I just suggest that if you have any questions, you can use the chat function and I will help John to uh, ensure that he can answer the chat, uh, the questions or the whatever you want to uh, during the course of the presentation rather than saving everything to the last moment because then we might have forgotten that so please uh, feel free to uh, send your chat in or make a comment or whatever and i try to make sure that john knows about it and uh, over to you john great thank you mats thank you euro Korea, and thank you for everyone attending today um looking at the countries we have we have a very nice international representation i see we have members from Kenya, we have Zimbabwe, we have Sweden. Um, Chris, I wasn't aware where you were coming from, but maybe you can write that in the chat and uh, Mats can mention it. Um, but uh, look, thank you all for joining. Um, I wanted to arrange this presentation for specifically the Eurocree audience because the partnership which I'll present today, which HOSCO has created Love Strength, is very much related to academia, the challenges we're currently going through with academia, adjusting the COVID-19, but even more importantly, what the future of academia is gonna look like related to hospitality, education, and training. I think you probably heard through various webinars and conferences and attendees, et cetera, that this has been a somewhat disruptive event for hospitality education. And the schools that emerge through it will not be the same. There's a lot of talk about blended learning. There's a lot of talk of all online learning. And there's some talk that everyone will go back to normal. Um, but what we have arranged with Lobster Inc. and with HOSCO is a way to help facilitate that new normal. And it's a way to bring online industry training into the classrooms, whether it's used for supporting internships, supporting vocational programs, or even reaching out to the industry. In my time with EuroCree, which has now been about seven or eight years, in all the conferences I've attended, in all the beautiful places I've been, there's always been this common trend which has been discussed, and that's been the gap between industry and academia. And the reason it's been discussed is because we're trying to bring both those worlds together, but it's sometimes an imperfect marriage. We have the EuroCree and therefore the iCree members who come from academic institutions and who must and need to focus on research in, in the industry. But at the same time, we have the needs of the students who need to be best prepared to have successful careers in industry, which has revolved around both academic learning and vocational and or skills based learning. And so when this lobster ink opportunity came to our table at HOSCO, I saw somewhat of the solution or at least one of the solutions, because I finally feel that there is a way to not just bring ideas that could be used in the industry into the classroom, but rather facts and tools that are used by the industry into the classroom. And that's basically what Lobster Inc. is. They are a provider of online courses hosted on the, their own LMS to over a million plus learners around the world. And those learners are staff. They are hotel staff in some of the major four or five star luxury brands you all probably know, Kempinski, Marriott, Hilton, Accor, one and only. Um, they even work with Nestle and some uh, associations as well. So Lobster Inc has for over 20 years been making these courses, hosting it on their own platform and providing these corporate companies with the internal tools to train their staff. 
But then here comes Hosko. And the ironic thing is that this relationship started before COVID-19. On a, on a blistery day in Barcelona, the executives of Lobster Inc. came to our offices and we had a lovely two, three days of discovery meetings and chit chat, of course, relationship building. And at the end, they wanted two things from us. They wanted us to bring Lobster Inc. to more of an SME market, which was our kind of forte with Osco being the boutique hotels and restaurants who hire the students. And they also wanted us to consider bringing it to schools. And on our end, we kind of said, SME, eh, you know, we're, we're a hospitality network. We connect talents with employers. We're not sure we want to sell training. But on the school's side, that's where we got very excited for that reason I mentioned earlier, that it's a way to bridge academia. And then COVID-19 hit. <laughs> and then COVID-19 hit, and all of our plans in the institutions went out the window, and somewhat the plans of Hosco went out the window too, as in using our normal business model of providing talents to employers. Of course, employers were not looking to find talents. They were looking to save their businesses. They were focusing on their finances. They were focusing on their health and uh, health and security policies, and they're focusing getting through it. So we understood at Hosco that this was a bit of a blessing, but also a very timely blessing related to hospitality education. So you fast forward a couple months, once we had this agreement in place, Hosco, the world's largest hospitality network, became the reseller of Lobster Inc. courses, LMS, into the world of academia, which sounds great, and it is, but academia is a complicated world. And so for the last three months when we've had this relationship, I've been discovering the ins and outs, speaking to literally hundreds of hotel schools and figuring out, theoretically, we all wanna bridge the gap of industry and academia, but can it be bridged? Are there administrative barriers to bridging it? Are there financial barriers to bridging it? Are there adoption barriers to bridging it, even from a student perspective? So today, I wanted to share with you uh, just a bit about Hosco in case you don't know about it a bit about Lobster Inc. and to demonstrate to you some of the various ways we've had some early adopter schools integrate Lobster Inc. into their curriculums. And hopefully by the end of that, you may have some more ideas on the direction hostility education is going and perhaps some tools I'll be able to support you with your own uh, evolutions at your institutions. So thank you again for everyone being here. Now I'm gonna share my screen. So there's gonna be a bit of Quasi boring PowerPoint, but I'm going to try to mix in a couple of videos to keep it lively. Yeah, so one moment. So. Max, are you seeing the screen? Or Matt? Yes? Good. Okay. So, Hosco Love String, partnering support your online learning. That's the idea. In case you don't know about Hosco, however, I just wanted to give you a very brief overview um, in case some of you actually don't know about us yet. So we are the world's largest hospitality network. Yeah, we bring the best hospitality schools, talents, employers together in a single online space. For lack of a better term, you could say Hosco is like LinkedIn for hospitality. Yeah, very specific to our industry. The members come from schools, they come from the industry, and the employers are all companies related to hospitality, not just hotels and restaurants, but anybody who wants to hire a hospitality talent. Hosco has a global presence in 50 plus countries and we're empowering hospitality on a global scale. Everyone who joins Hosco has a passion for hospitality. Yeah, and they share that common passion with the world. And more than being just a job board, we are a proper network where you can connect with people, you can chat with people, you can find the history of the companies, not just apply for a job, yeah? So overall, on our platform, we have 1.5 million activated profiles. We get around 600,000 visits per month. And before COVID-19, we had around 260,000 monthly active users. And again, this is an audience of students, alumni, and professionals. Yeah. But schools play a big role at Hosco. And that's been my role at Hosco for the last actually five plus years. As a director of development at Hosco, I have helped build relationships with over 400 world-class institutions all uh, levels of hospitality institutions from vocational schools in Europe to university departments in the United States to dedicate hotel schools in Switzerland. We've had over 400 partners who have allowed their students and alumni to join the platform and who some of which have adopted our technology to manage their own alumni networks and career placement functions. You can see a couple listed here, Vattel, Glion, 
Ecole de Lausanne, EHL, actually our founders come from EHL, Swiss Education Group, ALMA, NQIT in Taiwan, um, Le Cordon Bleu, Purdue, FIU, etc. We also work with a couple of the associations around the world, including the World Chef Association. So in this network, the main idea is to connect a talent with an employer. And there are about 7,000 plus hospitality companies on Hosco looking to do that. They found that by posting a job on Hosco, it's a more streamlined approach rather than going to a generic job board. And they also love the fact that the hospitality talents can be curated, meaning show me talents come from a certain school with a certain background, with a certain skill, certain language, nationality, et cetera, but all related to hospitality. And we work with some of the very big brands as well as some very small boutique hotels. You know? But our, our KPI is basically placements, right? We are not a placement company, but we're trying to make sure the talent is connecting with the employer and therefore the employer is eventually hiring the talent. And so in 2019, we had 11,600 internships posted on HOSCO, of which we had 257,000 internship applications and 116,000 matched internship applications. And that means basically when the employer said, I want a talent from Switzerland who speaks French, wants to work in front office, that's who they found. That's a matched application. And on the full-time jobs where we have our biggest strength, we had 35,000 full-time jobs posted on HOSCO with 1.5 million applications and 900,000 matching applications. So I guess that's just proof that what we've built works, connects the talent with the employer. So from a school side, um, just to kind of end the HOSCO piece is why a school joins HOSCO is they try to build a community. They wanna make sure that all their students and alumni become part of HOSCO because it lets them connect with the other students and alumni, as well as students with a common denominator of a nationality, a language and experience. And overall, they, be, they become part of this global 1.5 million member network. But then schools also join to grow opportunities. We have a lot of internships and jobs on Costco, obviously. And instead of searching one by one by one from your institution, you can have everything in one space. So many schools will say to the students, go to Costco, look for an internship and look for a job. It makes their job easier in finding these opportunities. But there's also a strategic piece. Data is very powerful. And if you know where your alumni are, you have some powerful marketing tools to bring in new students. So we help the schools collect the data from their alumni to find out the positions, the locations, the employers they're at, because they're active on HOSCO. And so we give that data back to the schools to integrate into their marketing campaigns. And as a new initiative, we now are helping or trying to help boost admissions, where we allow a school to post a course in a new area of HOSCO called a course directory, where Members can find short courses, bachelors, masters from some of the world's best hotel schools, and we can deliver qualified leads to those, um, chan those admissions channels of the universities um, to help increase their admissions. So that's a bit for HOSCO in case you didn't know it. Um, Mats, I might just see if there's any questions about HOSCO itself before I move on to Lobstering. Does anyone have any questions? If so, you can post it right there in the chat. Yeah. There is no one, in, nothing in the chat at the moment, John, so you continue. Great, thank you. So where does lobstering come into the picture? Again, back to the story. Blustery day in February, the executive, executive team of lobstering comes to HOSCO. And at the end of the day, or in those couple of days, we decided the goal is to make the online learning of the hospitality industry available to the hospitality schools of the world. Now, the funny thing was, is this had never been done before. As I mentioned, Lobster Inc. was normally an internal online training tool used by corporate companies. It had never been at scale brought to hotel schools. The reason Lobster Inc. came to us is simply because of the network of schools we had. We have over 400 schools who partner with Hosco, as I mentioned earlier, and my personal relationships and more importantly, my knowledge of the challenges that those schools were facing really became key in the promotion of Lobster Inc and getting that brand awareness of Lobster Inc and the quality of the programs into those school curriculums. Yeah. So I guess what we're trying to say is we want to support the schools during the virus, absolutely. So for any school looking for a quick fix in delivering online learning that's attractive for students, we could do that. But we're trying to think beyond the virus. And what we're seeing is that skills-based learning, behavior-based learning, will become a critical piece in the future because it doesn't just reflect the thing you know, it becomes a stackable, certifiable skill, something that's visual to a learner and visual to an employer. HOSCO comes into this mix with our platform in the fact that we wanna be able to map skills 
to employer needs, not just bachelor or master's or short course to employer needs. And we think Lobster Inc. becomes one of those building blocks because it's so vocationally focused, so behavior modification focused that when a student takes these skills, courses, reflects that on their CV, both digital or paper, and then shows it to an employer, that employer says, not only did you study someplace, but you can do something and here's proof. And in the world of digital marketing and digital networks, that becomes another segmentation and filter that we can use to best match talents to employers. So I say that because when, we, when you look at strategic partnership, there has to be a win-win on both ends, right? The win we saw was a better matching of talents to employers and a better support to our partner schools. The win that Lobster Inc. sees is entering an entirely new market that's never explored. Now, the interesting thing about Lobster Inc. is they're owned by Ecolab. They were purchased about two years ago. And Ecolab, as you know, is one of the, I think, the largest global provider of um, healthcare services and trainings to hospitality, but also non-hospitality industries. If you look at any soap dispenser, any chemical used in a hotel, it's probably Ecolab. So you ask the question, why would Ecolab purchase a production company like Lobster Inc? Because essentially that's what they are, right? They make the training, they film the training, they script the training, and they host the training on their own platform. Well, anyone who's taught hospitality education probably knows that teaching ho housekeeping or sanitation or anything related to health isn't always the most interesting thing. And Ecolab knows that. They know they have an extremely important but sometimes boring product. Now you hire the best production company in the world to make it attractive. That's one of the reasons why they work with and why they purchased Lobster Inc. So now in those hotels, when you're learning about hand sanitation, when you're learning about cleaning rooms, you're actually using Lobster Inc. courses. And that's a highly engaging way to learn rather than some older version, yeah? So that is why Ecolab purchased Lobster Inc. But when you look at Lobster Inc. and Ecolab and Hosco, they also see an opportunity for branding and even imprinting. And what I mean by that is that if you think about your students right now, learning from the materials in the classroom, what are they learning from? Maybe some books, maybe some online videos, but do they remember the publishers who they learn from? I highly doubt it. I think the publishers are only concerned with the academics, right? Do they remember the company that produced the video? I highly doubt it, yeah? But there are some schools who have worked with certification programs like the American Hotel Lodging Educational Institute I used to work for, who runs a huge certification program which you can integrate certifications into academia. So then students say, ah, I'm not just learning from a book, but I'm actually getting a certificate. That's an added value. And so it's that approach that Lobster Inc. finds very interesting in academia, not only to support the, to support the faculty, in finding solutions to deliver online learning or more vocationally based learning, but to get their brand into the future talents of the industry. Because think about it, once those students graduate and they're in hospitality, they may become HR managers and may become general managers. And when they're looking for training materials or they're looking for sanitation materials, they come to Lobster Inc. or they come to Ecolab. So long-term gain of this relationship is a real establishment of Lobster Inc. as a household name for hospitality training and education. And for the first time ever, it's going into the student environment, whereas before it was only at the trainee environment. So that's kind of the high level approach. But let's get back to academia. Let's get back to our daily suffering in this coronavirus and what can be done. What Lobster Inc. has is an online platform of 180 plus online courses. Now those courses are structured with 1,570 micro lessons, about two, three minute video lessons done in a highly engaging way to make sure that the learner actually learns, yeah? This is not a guy with a PowerPoint in the background going through the PowerPoint slides. This is like Hollywood style production. I'll show you in a moment. And that all encompasses around 200 plus hours of learning, yeah? So the subjects and the content didn't just come from Lobster Inc. It came from, from subject matter experts. There's a, a couple of programs on culinary arts, which are done by Culinary Institute of America. There's a couple of programs on sustainability done with the World Wildlife Federation. There's a couple of parts on spa done by Recents, uh, which is one of the uh, key spa consultancies of Europe. So it's not just their own ideas, they're taking best practices, yeah? But within this learning library, you have eight categories of learning covering all aspects of hospitality from line level 
to management. You have practical skills, knowledge and behavior training in different languages. There's actually over 20 different languages that can be subtitled on the LoveStream platform. So you're viewing the video, but seeing the subtitles. And we, you have some industry accredited courses adopted by some of the major brands. This is industry standard stuff at corporate level of Marriott, Hilton, Accor, et cetera. Yeah. So what we, Hosco, can do is offer what's called the Hallmark Learning Library. Now that encompasses about seven or eight core areas, bar and beverage, hospitality standards, as they call it, hospitality management, events, front office, food and beverage services, information security, and housekeeping. Now, you notice I didn't mention culinary or I didn't mention spa. Those programs are available, but they're from different licensed partners who created them, such as the Culinary Institute of America or such as Recense. But we're actually working with LobStream to see if we can also have that under the HOSCO remit to package everything together. But as I said, it's a new relationship, so things are still uh, progressing piece by piece. But what we have and what we can offer is the Hallmark Learning Library. So we start going through this. If you look at bar and beverage, what would be the tagline? Well, the tagline is provide your students with the skills and know-how required for a successful career in bar and beverage service. You have a, a lot of different areas covered in this. Bar upselling, whiskey cocktails, Bordeaux course, coffee professional, there are over 57 courses available and 11 what are called learning paths. Now that's one of the jargons in this lesson you'll have to remember because a learning path is linked to a certificate of completion. So there is an element of certification in Lobster Inc. as well. So if you complete all of these various courses under a certain learning path, you will get a certificate of completion, digital certificate generated automatically on the platform with the Lobster Inc. logo and the course you completed. Yeah. But remember the jargon is going to be the area of learning, which is bar and beverage, the course, which is the various courses, the lessons, which are the micro courses, which micro lessons part of the course, and bundles of courses, which become learning paths, which become and have certificates of completion. Yeah. So let's take a look at a course quickly. And Matt, again, let me know in case you can't see or hear this. Yeah. This is a little preview of the whiskey cocktails. Whiskey, popular drink, very trendy among the youth. I'll just give you a brief glimpse of what a whiskey cocktail uh, course would look like on Love Stream for your students or learners. <laughs> makes me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so look, this course is really just how to make cocktails, right? Very simply, it's going to be about how to make the cocktails, the preparation for the cocktail, etc. So in a bar and beverage program, you have both cocktail recipes, essentially, but you also have the management of the bar, right? The management of the people behind the bar, and also maybe the business of the bar. Here, we'll take a look at a bar upselling trailer. Just a moment. <clears throat> A bartender provides multifaceted service to guests. They can be entertainers, hosts, and tastemakers. But first and foremost, your bartender is a salesperson. This course, developed in partnership with seasoned professionals, trains bartenders to increase your bar's revenue while providing an unforgettable guest experience. Six concise lessons reveal insider tips and tricks, from creating opportunities for upselling to the finer details that ensure your guests' needs and desires are satisfied. Your bartender gains the confidence and poise to gain guests' trust, make excellent recommendations, and ensure your bar earns a return on investment. Contact Lobster Inc and request your demo account today. So there you go. So once again, like I mentioned, this is not just a guy with a screen in the background. This is high production content, yeah? So going through the learning library, bar and beverage, you have 57 courses, 
hospitality standards, you have 14 courses. Hospitality management, 15 courses. Events, 15 courses. Front office, 10 courses. Food and beverage service, 35 courses. Information security, 15, and housekeeping, nine. But I'm gonna cycle back here a bit and show you one more course, which I find really fascinating, which demonstrates the idea that this is essentially an open source platform. Because the courses you find on Lobster Inc. weren't just made only by them. Some of them were made for industry clients. But some of those courses are then shared with anyone else who has access to Lobster Inc. And so in that way, I like to liken Lobster Inc. a bit like a Netflix for hospitality training. When the Kempinski in Zurich would decide to make a new course, and if they decide that course to be available to the general public, it comes into the Lobster Inc. platform and it becomes available to your students. Yeah? Here's an example of a very unique program done around Chinese traveler standards, which as we know, especially now, China has recovered faster than anyone else. So we can probably imagine they'll be some of the first people to really hit the road and start generating the tourism dollars once COVID-19 is in recovery stage. It is estimated that Chinese outbound travel will reach 200 million travelers by 2020. This is expected to make the Chinese market the world's leading source of tourism. The best way to ensure quality guest experiences is by understanding your guest intrinsically. This course will assist hospitality teams in creating the most memorable and professional service for Chinese travelers. Created in partnership with industry experts, this course introduces your team to the principles of how to best accommodate Chinese guests. In 11 detailed lessons, learners will understand how to overcome language barriers and cultural nuances so they can provide excellent service to Chinese travelers. Ensure your team is ready to deliver the best quality service to the Chinese traveler market. Contact Lobster Inc. and request your demo account today. So they go through a lot of different areas on Chinese traveler standards. They go through the health and safety standards. They go through the uh, food and beverage standards, they even go through events, how to host a Chinese wedding. So getting that cultural knowledge as well as that vocational training knowledge into curriculums at schools, I think is a very important thing, and especially for the Chinese market in the future. Yeah. So we understand that why Lobster Ring is partnered with HOSCO. We understand essentially the learning library and what's available. Let's look at a bit of how these programs are made. Now, this is where it gets a bit different than a normal video. And I hate when people say, oh, we can give the students access to the videos. No, it's not a video, it's a platform, it's an LMS. So they have developed this training material by these core principles of balancing cognitive load, ensuring maximum knowledge transfer and retention, by storytelling, by creating emotional connections with technical and soft skills training, micro learning, task-based and focused on reducing seat time and accelerating time to competency. Again, these are very important KPIs for the industry. Operational support through access to useful tools, templates, advice, and refreshers. So it's not just seeing videos, you're gonna have templates used on Love Strength. And empathy as a guiding principle to ensure they are really aligned with the learner's reality and the understanding that everyone learns a little bit differently. You know? So, there are interactive lesson formats on this. It's not just watching a video. You can look at a document, you can look at a dialogue, you can have a hotspot where they're focusing on a certain skill that's gonna be zoomed in on. You have combination, visual choices, processes, um, processing recipes, simulations, interactive video. So they believe that interaction doesn't only make for a more engaging learning experience, it's proven to help the right knowledge stick and it expedites experience and builds confidence too. So when I look at this, I reflect back on the conversations I've had with some of my school partners. And some of them say, oh, we're going to make our own. And uh, just as I now and then hear someone say to me about Hosco, oh, we're going to make our own network. I say, good luck. Good luck. You need a lot of money and a huge talented team to do it at this level. I don't doubt that anyone can grab a good production team, go into their own kitchen facilities or their own restaurant and make some great videos. But an LMS and a platform built to this sophistication doesn't happen overnight. 20 years Lobster Inc. has been developing this platform. And you'll see later on, there can be a happy marriage between Lobster Inc. and the school's own content. But I think to completely recreate Lobster Inc. on their own would be a massive, massive investment. Yeah. And one not necessary. Why recreate the wheel if it's already running fine? Yeah. 
So features to make learning more accessible and engaging include practical outcome-based training that's more efficient and effective. They're giving access to learning and training on any device, anytime. That is very important in my mind because as we know, not everyone is experiencing this COVID-19 challenge in the same boat, if you will. Some boats are uh, cruise liners and some boats are little dinghies. In that meaning, I mean that I talked to a lot of my partners in Asia who say that their students have to learn from mobile devices. And now learning from mobile devices, not the same as the comfort of having an Apple computer sitting in front of you. And worse than that, some of the mobile providers in these countries have jacked up the data rates. So this is not an app, it's hosted on the internet. So as long as you have a mobile, uh, internet enabled mobile device, you can access Lobster Inc. just the same way you would on a computer. I think that's very important for developing countries, for Asian countries, or even for students uh, and professionals in parts of Europe and the United States, et cetera, who don't have regular access to a computer. Yeah? There's another piece that's really exciting, which is built-in gamification. And there's a way to motivate learners and encourage engagement. And that's done through something called medals, which I'll show you later on when I show you the platform. So imagine you're going through Chinese traveler standards. You are taking the courses, meaning you're watching a couple of videos, you're doing a couple of theory assessments, you're doing a couple of practical activities. Once you've done all of that and you've completed all those theory assessments, you get a medal. Yay, a medal. Who doesn't like medals, right? You get a gold, you get a silver, or you get a bronze. And that's all collected in an area of the LMS called achievements. And you're motivated. Go for the gold, go for the silver. Didn't get a silver, try it again to get the gold. Yeah. And so from the learner perspective, that's one of the gamified ways they use to keep the game, not just watch the video, say, I watched it and next, yeah? Certificates of completion issued after completing each learning path, I found has become a big motivating factor for the students, but also a kind of a tick in the box for KPIs of governments and associations. Right now we're talking to a couple of uh, government associations in Southeast Asia, who are looking at mandating Lobster Inc. courses within all of the hospitality schools of the country because it fits some of the standardized training requirements. But how do you prove you did the program? You get your certificate of completion. And you've probably seen a lot of these webinars happening all around the world who require certificate of completion because that's the tick in the box to say, I did it and it's proven I did it. So the system generates those automatically. And remember, certificates of completion come from completing a learning path. And there's 37 overall. Yeah. And finally, um, this really is a multinational tool because of different language choices you have. When you would watch the video, you would see a drop down to choose the different languages to be subtitled in. Yeah. And if for some reason there is not a language available, and if you're looking at national implementation or working with governments or association, Lobstering can actually be hired to do the translation for a specific country. We were in initial talks with Romania, for example, because it wasn't in Romania. Um, so if you see a high level opportunity there, maybe even through like Erasmus Plus, there's an opportunity to have all of those content translated into local languages, just for your knowledge. And so you can see here below, one of the examples of a certificate of completion, yeah. But I'm also gonna show you this uh, interesting video because it gives you a perspective of what the learner sees on the platform. So just a moment, I'll let that load up. Learn, apply, revisit. Three simple actions that describe the Lobster Inc. learning experience. Let's take a closer look. As a learner, you will access the platform either through single sign-on or secure email invitation. Upon sign-in, you are directed to the Explore page, which displays all of the learning content that is available to your organization. The Learn page shows you all of the content that has been assigned to you, including both learning paths and individual courses. Learning paths are a series of courses combined in a particular order to deliver role-specific training. Select a learning path to view the individual courses and get more information. No hablo espanol? Not a problem. You can change language at any time. Start your course. The clean, distraction-free interface allows you to focus on the task at hand, while the progress bar below indicates where you are in the course and what comes next. But learning on Lobster Inc. isn't limited to just video. Different types of interactive lessons make learning more engaging and build your knowledge at key stages throughout a course. 
ready to test what you've learned? Theory assessments provide real-time feedback and serve as summative reviews of the key learning outcomes. Okay, wait, was that a perfect score? Medals are unlocked with each assessment, gamifying the experience and inspiring better performance. Badges recognize progress and are issued on the successful completion of each course. Certificates are then awarded for the successful completion of all courses in the learning path. Ready for the next course? The Lobster Inc. platform intuitively recommends what to do next, whether that's encouraging you to further your learning journey or revisit concepts that you're not 100% sure of. That's a quick run through of the Lobster Inc. learner experience. Concise, interactive, and job relevant learning that's accessible whenever you need it. Okay, so there you saw the actual platform in action, if you will. Yeah. Finally, before I go through a bit of Q&A regarding the content and the platform itself, let's talk about learning management and reporting. This is an LMS. It's not just a bunch of videos put together, and therefore it has a fully enabled data capture service. So if you're a program manager or an academic, you have your own platform. You get your own access. You can invite your students. You can assign learning assignments. You can track course progression, and you can identify areas that need attention and uh, view the data and results. So you can manage your members. If you have maybe a student there that shouldn't be there, you can kick them out or you can add them. You can basically use the entire learning library to prescribe certain courses or give a student access to everything to explore as they wish. But regardless of how they do it, you'll be able to track their progression. So let's say you've assigned that um, luxury traveler standards or Chinese traveler standards. You'll know exactly when the student logged in, how long he took to do the program, how well he did on the achievements, and what courses should be recommended next for him. You'll also be able to contact the student at any time through their email addresses, which they've uploaded privately. This is GDPR compliant, by the way. And when the member itself, the student logs in, it all the data is kept to the member. That means that if I would share my access with my friend, my friend would be using my uh, Lobster Inc. account, and therefore skewing my data. So when a member receives an access code, they make their own username, they make their own password, so all data is captured to that unique user. And that helps prevent cheating. Because some students do get a bit creative. Yeah. And then finally, you get the metrics. So get the overview of how often the students are using it, what areas are struggling in, and what areas can be improved upon. So this is a full LMS reporting section of Lobster Inc. Yeah. Last but not least, there is a way to customize it. Now, the way this works, and this is the normal way the hospitality industry uses Lobster Inc. Because they actually want their own brand on their own learning platform, obviously. So they want the Marriott there. They want the Hilton. They want the Hyatt. Schools can do that too. What that means is that when your learners log into the platform, it would say the name of your institution or the name of your hospitality school or your department. You can customize the look, the colors, the navigation, um, the main call to actions, the buttons, if you will. All that can be done with your branding in mind. The other very important point to mention is that you can upload your own content. If you did make some instructional videos and you want them available to your students on Lobster Inc, that can be uploaded. This is also some discussions of having at government level. Because for example, Lobster Inc does a very good job of representing international hospitality standards. But what about the Maltese way? What about the Romanian way? What about the Kenyan way? There is a way for you to make your own content and put that on Lobster Inc. Therefore, you're exposing the learner to the international traveler standards, as well as to maybe a more unique cultural element that you want those learners to know. And one of the best examples of that is that what Lobster Inc. did with the Dubai Way, where they worked with the Dubai government to create both generic training, as well as very specific training to give the look and the feel that the Dubai government wanted to deliver to guests visiting the Emirates. Yeah. Um, I'll mention how that works a little bit later regarding uh, setup and et cetera, yeah. So in conclusion, on the product side, what you see is there are a lot of brands using this and there is potential for academia. How it fits into academia will be the subject of our next little discussion. But right now, I'd just like to open up for any Q&A based on the Hosco relationship, based on the product of Lobster Inc, and based on maybe the usability of the platform. Great, John. Thank you so far. We have a question here. 
uh, how do you go about creation of generic training? What is the criteria used to determine this? Um, I'm just asking for clarification on that question. Is it how does Lobster Inc. go about the creation of generic training or how would someone create their own customized training? Uh, yes, customized training. Say, for instance, we, you know, you, you want to do a training for, you know, based on the current trends in Kenya, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's two options for that. One, you do it yourself, meaning you hire your own production team, your own film team, your own script. And then when it's complete, you upload it onto the Lobster Inc. platform. Or two, you hire Lobster Inc. themselves. They're often hired, again, like Dubai, for example, by governments and groups to use their own knowledge of how these videos are made. They use their own kind of way or special way of giving that behavior modification training. So you can either make it yourself or you can hire them. But in order to upload content into the platform, you have to be at a certain level of subscription with Lobster Inc. And that does get down to the finances. And I'll share that a bit later, but what it basically means is as long as the institution or the school or the association is at a certain threshold of learners and therefore a certain threshold of subscription fees, that unlocks this private branded space which can be used to upload additional content. If the school doesn't want that, or maybe they're a bit more uh, price conscious, they can use the generic tool, which is the HOSCO space where it's access to everything, but cannot be customized, yeah. Thanks. Great. Great. John, I have a question. Yes. Because you mentioned about the uh, uh, managerial uh, courses as well. Mm -hmm. well how, how would you describe them? Are they like the very slow little step about the practical ones or are we actually progressing further and further up the management scale, if you see what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just gonna briefly share my screen because I have an Excel which outlines them all and they'll be easier to illustrate that. So, okay. Right, so one of the areas of Lobster Inc is hospitality management. That's how they've titled it, right? And some of the course titles could be, for example, commerce management, um, communication, decision-making and problem solving, delegation and task management financial management um, in multiple levels of advancement, yeah? Fundamentals of being a leader, or um, hospitality sales skills. So what you'll find in hospitality management is a mix of both more soft skills, people management skills, and hard financial revenue, KPI, ROI management skills, yeah? Um, the learner type, we've looked at the mapping before. I would not say this is the kind of training for a skilled, experienced, revenue manager it's probably going to be a little rudimentary but for someone getting into that role i think it'd be quite useful to get a quick fix on some of the major um, skills and knowledge in those finance and team management areas yeah brilliant thanks yeah. any more questions yes i've got another question john mm -hmm. okay Aside, uh, the courses that you've shown are quite uh, quite good, and maybe the question is in line uh, with with what uh, um, someone just asked. And I think that's maths. Yeah. So, do, do you have courses that are would be suited for the back of house operations? I've seen you you talked about security. You know, say things like marketing. Um, accounts in hospitality yes yes um so going into the jargon again um i'm going to use a description which is kind of easy to see in a one snapshot which is the learning path summary yeah so to your question when we're thinking back of house we're probably thinking more of housekeeping for example um housekeeping alone has over 36 hours of learning in 21 courses you can have Cleaning surfaces, which has 10 lessons and over two hours of learning just on cleaning surfaces. So it goes very, very in depth. You can have the guest interaction from the housekeeping team. Obviously health and safety standards is very, very important. You can have very specific trainings on housekeeping daily in public areas or preparation or room basics or room finishes, yeah. Um, so housekeeping is covered 
in a quite substantial level, 36 hours of learning when there's overall 200 hours of learning, there's a lot. There's also a fair amount on information security with nine hours. So that's on um, data, GDPR compliance is a big one. And there's a lot on, PC, um, on um, PCR and basically uh, making sure you're credit card compliant in your different trainings and knowledge. There's a bit on security as well. Um, and then within food and beverage service, you have kind of both the front and back office. You have front and obviously the service and the back and some of the kitchen management. Yeah. Thanks. Does that help answer some of your questions? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Mats, any other questions? No, at the moment, no. I think you, you're done with the questions for this. Okay, great. So now I'm going to do one thing and I'm gonna go actually into the platform itself. I think it'll be useful for you to see uh, live, like you saw a bit on that video, how both a user, meaning a student or a professional would use it, and also how a school or a manager of a school would use Lobster. And again, I'm coming into the generic Costco branded environment. This is the environment that anyone can use, but doesn't allow for customization of uploading your own content or changing the colors, etc. Yeah. And I'll say before I show you this, it's a bit confusing. We're actually working with Lobster Inc. to have the platform say more Costco in partnership with Lobster Inc. But right now it just shows Costco, which could, for the uninitiated person, someone could think that this is Costco, which is not. So it is completely separate from our own platform, which is like LinkedIn. It's just labeled as Hosco for now, just to make that clear. Yeah. Okay, and so here we are. See, it says Hosco, but it's not the Hosco platform. It's just our, our label, our logo. Yeah. So like you saw in that little teaser video, when the learner logs in, and again, they do that by using a single access code and making their own username and their own password. Once they're logged in, they come into the explore area. This is the area where we have all courses listed and you can also search by specific learning paths or single courses. If I look at the learning path, for example, bartending beyond the basic is a learning path that has 13 courses. Bartending professional, 25 courses. And once again, if you remember from our little lesson, a learning path is connected to what? A certificate of completion, yeah? So if you take the program of FMB Service Professional, you'll earn a certificate of completion as an FMB Service Professional once you've completed all the courses and all the three assessments that go with it, yeah? But back to this explore area and getting into the topic of how can schools use this. One of the ways I've found schools are using it as is a additional supplementary resource to curriculum. And what that means is that when you look at all the areas covered in lobstering, food and beverage, housekeeping, front office, management, et cetera, maybe not everything, but some of it could be very useful and actually link to a specific objective of a class or even of a single lesson. And so what we're exploring with a lot of the universities with the departments of hospitality is giving students an unlimited subscription per year so that when the school needs the student to reference a certain area on lobster ink, they can. So for example, if we're looking at event operations <clears throat> and you're in an event operations class, event management class, and the instructor can say, go to lobster ink and take the banquet service order of service course. It'll take you 79 minutes. Take the buffet design, various buffet styles. It'll take you 36 minutes, right? You then as a learner would go in you would assign this course as your own and you would simply start learning, yeah? So once it's been assigned, that's the key when the institution will know I can check the learning status. Important to note is that the explore is for anybody who wants to explore on their own, but the learn area is for what is prescribed. It's either prescribed by you because you want to learn it or it's prescribed by the faculty. So if a course is listed in the learn area, it will be measured and it will be managed, yeah? So you see how here it says self-assign. These are my own personal interests. I wanted to learn about milk for coffee. I wanted to learn about kitchen cost basics, but this is where you have to do it based on the manager from the school. And right here is where the name of the school, the department would show up, right? But it doesn't have to happen all at once. Again, what we're looking at is a yearly subscription as a continuous content resource, right? So at some point, a lecturer could say, they themselves go inside, 
they click a course, they assign it to all their students. And when the students log in, they see, uh-oh, assignments, event operations, I need to complete it, right? They will go through the really turnkey way of completing it. This requires no real um, uh, guidance from the lecture. It's really all self-learning, right? And at the end of it, they will take their theory assessment and they'll earn their certificate of completion. From the learner perspective, they'll be gamified or they'll be motivated by the medals, which come in the achievements. That's where I can check my own progress. But from the faculty perspective, that's where it goes into the reports. And the reports, they can look at the platform adoption, the assignment progression, the learning activity, and then the overall assessment and performance. And they can look by individual learner, they can look by groups of learners, uh, they can look by uh, even departments. We have a way of creating different departments within uh, Lobstering for the various larger schools, for example. Yeah. Um, before I go on there, Matt, any questions on that? That sometimes gets a bit confusing. Mm, nope, I can't see any questions at the moment, John. Yeah, okay. So way number one to potentially integrate Lobstering into an academic environment is as a learning resource. There is a fee paid by the student one time a year and they have unlimited access for as much as they like. And the faculty can then assign courses which match the curriculum. Now, way number two, which is the most popular right now for probably uh, logical reasons is internships. Very unfortunately, a lot of students can't do their internships right now. And a lot of these schools, hospitality schools have built their marketing around come to XY country, do an internship in XY country, right? That's a big marketing pull. And since the students are in that country, but because of COVID-19, a lot of facilities are shut down and employers are not offering internships, they have to solve the problem. And I, I will be the first one to agree, it's not a perfect solution, but it is a viable solution to tell a student to use lobstering to gain industry skills and behavior skills, yeah? because of the way it's been built, it can do that to an extent. It will never replace actually being in the internship period, but it can supplement it, yeah? And that has been the number one interest of some of our partner schools. Um, the early adopters I can mention is a San Diego State University actually, uh, who's an ICRE member. They early on saw this as a way to make sure that the students who couldn't find internship still have a way to complete their internship hours and overall of course, earn their degree. So San Diego State purchased licenses for all their students. They created a subgroup, which is called SDSU, San Diego State University Internship. And all the students are listed here and they can manage them as they wish, yeah? But let's say San Diego State University says, we also wanna give this to our year one bachelor students. They can as well. They would just create another subcategory and call it SDSU year one hospitality, create a separate group of students, separate code, send it out to them as well. So the segmentation inside the platform can be done based on the needs of the school. But right now, SDSU students, who although San Diego is an absolutely wonderful city, we had an IPRE conference there a couple of years back, they can't find internships. So they're taking Lobster Inc. They've been assigned a certain number of hours to complete. And when they do complete that, it ticks the box for the internship. Yeah, that was one way of doing it in an hours-based learning. SDSU said complete 50 hours or 100 hours on Love Street, it qualifies. The other way for internships has been more of the prescribing learning. That's where in advance, the career team or internship team assigned the courses like I showed you earlier. And then they made sure that that was uh, tracked through the system and making sure the students complete specific courses, not just generic courses. That was because of some of the internship skills learned had to be proven, right? So they had to show that this particular school in Switzerland made sure that by the end of your six month internship, you'll be able to set a table. You'll be able to greet a guest. And so they wanted to make sure that the specific courses chosen match those learning outcomes, yeah? So lobstering can, at least in the short term, solve the problem of internships, which can happen due to COVID-19. But like I said, I don't see this as a quick fix. I see it as a long-term support tool. And how, where that gets interesting is tracking the consistency of the internship experience. Some of the schools I've spoken to, particularly in Switzerland said, look, every student has to do an internship. They vary wildly and some have a wonderful experience and some have an awful experience, but they've gained industry experience nonetheless. 
But when it comes for me as a manager to track what they learn, it's impossible. Some know everything, some know nothing because they were making key cards for six months, right? And although that may not be the nice experience to have, that's just reality of the industry. Sometimes they don't deliver the best internships. So he looked at this, this particular school in Switzerland and said, this standardizes skills and behavior learning. I can send the student on internship and hopefully they'll have a good experience. But if I give this to them in advance, one, it better prepares them to go on the internship period and therefore be a better intern and therefore have the company come back to the school and say, please send me more. These kids are great. Yeah. And two, it makes sure there is some level of standardization in what was learned skills wise. Right. And I find that really fascinating because when you think about preparation for internship period, at least in my experience, I went to the Leon Institute in Switzerland myself. There wasn't much. We all knew it was coming. We all searched for it. We went to a, maybe a half hour or one hour uh, lesson at the internship office and off you go. No preparation. This could be used as a preparation tool to make sure that you're better equipped both psychologically and skills wise for that sometimes quite daunting internship experience. Yeah. Any questions on the integration of Lobster Inc. with internships, career departments, et cetera, before I, I go on? Anyone a question? I think it was very clear, John, so I'm not surprised. Okay, great. So we have one, into the curriculum, two, inter into the internships, three, into the industry. So this is where it gets a bit interesting too, because although Lobster Inc. is a very, very big company, and they've worked with a lot of other companies, they don't have a presence all around the world. You know, for example, I see my, my friends here from Kenya are here. We're talking with the TPA in Kenya because we find that there's a huge gap in skills training in the country. And this could be a way for companies who aren't a Marriott, who aren't the Hilton to get this kind of training. And so what I'm now looking at is various partnerships with key associations or key schools who want to bring this turnkey platform and turnkey training to the industry. But how it's done is a little unique. We're not just saying to the association or school, go resell it to a hotel. Lobstering doesn't want that. They don't want that because they want to own the relationship with those hotels and rightly so. They could be an Ecolab partner or they could be part of a larger group that makes it difficult to manage if there's another reseller selling to hotels. But what they do want to do, and, and I very much am uh, all for, is encouraging schools to develop continuous professional development pathways. And that gets to be an exciting idea because what I'm seeing really quickly happen, I think you all are too, is that a school is not just a school. School gives academic knowledge, but it can also give industry knowledge. And who wants to have the industry knowledge is gonna be based on who knows the brand of the school. I mean, let's look at it very simply. Let's look at the Harvards and MITs, world-renowned world -renowned brand, Multiple years ago, you thought, oh, I have to go to a little town in the middle of the Northeast United States to actually study at Harvard. No more. You can do it online. What's driving the online uh, popularity of Harvard courses is, of course, the content, the incredible instructors, but also the brand. And that brand is really what, at the end of the day, you kind of want to have on your CV, right? So a lot of schools in breakneck pace are trying to develop their own continuous professional development short courses. Short courses aimed at the industry, short courses that aimed at an audience that doesn't know the school, and short courses that are probably in a lot of ways just designed to be an admissions teaser. So you take the short course, and then you can come to us to get the full master's. I mean, one of the best examples in an early leader, and that was Hong Kong Polytechnic who made their micro masters where I believe the numbers were something like 300,000 people took a free short course from uh, Hong Kong Poly hosted on the edX platform and 3,000 went and did the master's. That's 3,000 students. Try getting 3,000 students in your master's program. It's not an easy thing to do, right? So where Lobster Inc. comes into the picture is turnkey content. If a school wants to take the Lobster Inc. platform as it is, brand it as its own, add in their own content, and then basically say, this is our offer to the industry. They can do that. You know? So they have the lobster and courses ready to go. And they have their own specific ones made however they like. right? But the key is that what we do not want the schools to do, as I said earlier, is sell to the hotels, meaning we're just going to give you access to lobster and you manage it. It's the school's platform. It's the school's program. We want the client coming to the school 
and the school managing the learner. As long as that's the case, Lobster Inc. is very, very much in uh, support of this. And without a doubt, why? Well, back in the blustery day in February in Barcelona, remember two things they wanted from Hosco? One was an avenue into schools and two, an avenue into SME B2B. And we said no to the SME B2B, probably a good decision, but the schools in the country, in the region, Kenya, for example, you know your employers, you know your people, you know the requirements of the industry, and you also know government regulations and guidelines. So how could Hosco or how could even Lobster Inc. go into these SME markets without having this knowledge? Very difficult and costly and timely, but the schools can. And the schools should because they're brand leaders. The associations should, and they could because they're brand leaders, yeah? So long story short, you can take it, you can brand it, and you can use it to build a CPD program to create a brand micro course strategy for your school and in your region. Any questions on that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Finally, um, we'll move on to more of the innovative ways, but uh, you know we have to get innovative in these tricky times. It's admissions. It's like how how could this fit into admissions? Well, if you think about the learning pathway of a hospitality student, it doesn't start usually with "I really want to go and be a waiter." No way. I really want to go and be a front office receptionist. No way. It starts with the idea of I want to travel the world. I want to be a global individual or I want to maybe want to study in this beautiful location or in that beautiful chateau or chalet, but mostly it's about having a global career. And hospitality schools know that they have a lock on that pathway, but where they lose it a bit is when it gets down to what can I do with my career? What will I learn? What will I actually be? And that's where all the consultants and all the admissions advisors come in and try to tell that story. You can be successful. You will be a general manager. It will take time, but you can do it, right? But then you have the parents coming in and saying, I want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or a chemist like your brother, your sister. I know this because I worked for some of the admissions offices of some of the Swiss schools in the past. So selling that dream is fairly easy, the global dream, but selling the pathway of hospitality as a career is difficult. So some more innovative schools have said, what if I can create a course using Hosco, I'm mean, sorry, using Lobster Inc and give it as a teaser to a student. What if I can say, you know what? You may not know about hospitality, but let me give you a taste of it. We're gonna give you a free course or maybe paid depending on the school strategy. And you're gonna be able to go in and try out all these different areas. You wanna be a barista, you wanna be a front office, you wanna be a revenue manager. You got everything to play with, you know? Try it out and then let us know because that's the kind of information, that's the kind of experience you'll have if you come to our school, yeah? So admission strategy number one is generic access of Lobster Inc. as a teaser. Admission strategy number two is curated course with Lobster Inc. content. That takes more time, but that's basically the idea of putting together specific courses in a specific order which match to curriculum and match to credits to say, even if you can't come to Switzerland or until you come to Switzerland, you can already earn credits. Now, yeah? take this course, it's Lobster Inc. slash Swiss, German, whatever school. And when you're done with it, it'll count for credits. And when you arrive to us, you'll be that much farther ahead. And some schools have even said, yes, it costs you 100 or 200 bucks, but guess what? We'll reimburse that when you come. So I find that a fascinating strategy. And I actually like that strategy because you're giving them a taste of the school because again, it's in a branded environment. You're also, again, inspiring that career into hospitality. And you can't do that with a brochure. I mean, again, I work with these admissions departments. You, you know, I would, I would be at these booths and these fairs and everyone's giving out a brochure and the brochure's going into the trash the next day. These are digital natives. That's not how they learn anymore. Mom and dad might want to look at the brochure or have the PDF on the computer, but this gives them a real taste of what the industry can be like. So I get very excited about that idea. You know, the idea of Lobster Inc. being a teaser and supporting the admissions processes at schools. Any question there? No? Nope, nothing at the moment, John. Finally, we'll go to an idea of 
and it's a bit more of a US centric idea, but I'll mention it in case we have a global audience here. It's um, books, books, learning from books. I love books and I hate books. I like to learn from books and sometimes I'd rather be at the screen. But the point is books are expensive. Books are expensive and some of the institutes around uh, the world, especially in the United States, students pay up to $150 for a single book, which they use for one course and they never use again. My concept is that the book is necessary in some areas, but in other areas where it's again, more vocationally, more training focused, Lobstering does the job better. It's an online platform, turnkey content adopted by the global industry. And if you give a subscription rather than a book to a student, it becomes a constantly used tool in an environment that they understand. The books are absolutely necessary when teaching theory, but when teaching practice or something vocational, I believe that this matches and aligns better with today's younger learners. And of course, based on the costs, it certainly makes a lot more sense from a uh, university perspective. Uh, most of the US schools I speak to right now are saying, we might spend money to save money because there are a lot of departments having budget cuts right now. And they're looking for any way to cut. And those books are sometimes quite an expensive fee. So when you look at a lobster subscription, some have said, let's make it a course fee. Let's make it a lab fee. Let's get it into the tuition. And so when the kids come in 2021, they're, they aren't seeing another X amount, but they're ex being able to be given this access because of a slight increase in tuition. And that takes a long time to approve, has to go through the academic committee, has to go through the curriculum committee. But if approved, then you have a very viable resource for students to learn to, from in the future. Yeah. So that's been my findings so far in the last three months of rolling out this partnership, speaking to almost about hundred different schools. Number one interest for the earliest pain point is solving the internship problem. Number two interest at the long-term engagement of the student and faculty resource has been using it as a continuous resource. Um, number three, more innovative ways has been that CPD approach where some of the big brand schools are definitely going down, yeah. Um, number four is looking at the admissions, using it as a teaser. And number five is save money by spending a bit of money. Yeah. And on that very final, final point, I will get to the prices because no, we don't do this for free. Um, there is a cost to lobstering, but it's not a lot. Very simply said, it's a hundred euros per student per year. Yeah. If you have a hundred students, it costs you 10,000 euros. Yeah. If you want to have a branded environment. It's still 100 euros, no difference. There is no additional franchise fee to pay, but the order volume, and then this is Lobster Inc's rules, these are not hospitals rules, has to equate a minimum 15,000 euros, so basically 150 students, right? And the reason that that is is because of hosting costs, something I don't quite understand, but when the private brand environment is created, Lobstering uses Microsoft Azure and the hosting costs plus the service and fees that go from the Lobstering team to set this up and curate the, the platform is more expensive. With the Hosco space, it's like one giant global school, but each person has their own private space within that global school. That's why there's no setup cost. There's no franchise fee. It's just on demand license delivery at hundred euros per learner per year. And a year starts when the student activates their access. It's not when a contract is signed. So I have a lot of schools telling me, we want to launch this in fall of 2021. We'll look at the contract for all the, all the legal terms and et cetera. But we will be ordering subscriptions for our students starting in July for an August intake. Fine. Yeah. We don't need to tell us in advance how many you need. You just need to tell us maybe a couple, uh, a week before how many you'll, you'll require. Nothing more. Yeah. So that's about it. Hosco is still Hosco. We're still the world's largest hospitality <laughs> network, but we have transitioned to be also a learning training content provider through Lobster Inc. And due to our unique relationship with schools, we're propelling this message and this product as quick as possible. And thanks to Eurocree for helping that pro propelling nature uh, with this group today. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you, uh, Ray. Thank you, John. Thank you for a lovely presentation. And uh, any questions now before we let uh, John go? Yes, Matt, I have one here coming from Mike Farrell in Zimbabwe. To John, thank you, John and Matt and Eurocree for hosting this. Um, 
the people from Kenya and other parts. I don't know how Sweden is, it's cold. John, where are you based at the moment? Yeah, um, I'm in Poland. Um, I, Bar Hosko's office is in Barcelona, Spain, but um, I made the okay. strategic and family decision to move back <laughs> to Poland. And now I'm at a external office, but when the office, when the COVID is back, I'll be flying uh, to Barcelona on a regular basis. But now my wife, Good. my kids, we're in Poland, so it's cold. <laughs> we, we have a lot of relationships with Poland because I'm Irish. I'm here 30 years next year in Zimbabwe. You were very helpful, John, when we asked you about Hosco. I got a bit of ill health since I spoke to you last on teeth and what have you, but I'm recovering. Uh, a long story. Uh, Hosco were very positive in support and help for small SMEs like ourselves who are trying to grow and trying to spread competencies and education in Southern Africa. Yeah. Um, we've all been hit by COVID, but we, in April, we got on to Lobster Inc. And SMEs didn't feature in, in their branding. You mentioned something, you had a meeting with them in Barcelona in February. Mm -hmm. In April, they were saying, no, you have to have huge numbers. So exactly. you're, you're, you're making business sense. Start, you, you, you know, the small guy is as big as, he may, he may be a, another Cree tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we're keen to talk further on it. Um, I, somebody, maybe you, John, was talking sense of who the directors was, but the lady was very pleasant on the phone, but she says, thanks for inquiring, but we're not interested. So it stopped in about about April. We were on exchange on the on the internet. Yeah, Mike, oh, that, that, that just reflects this this um, this threshold, right? That yeah. and it's it's not you know if, if your company isn't oriented towards a certain market, you can't do business in that market, right? Yeah. Um, so it was no wrongdoing of of Lobster Inc. Just wasn't in their strategic strategy. But when Hosco came into the picture, they saw a way to access the academic environment. And then through the academic environment to access the SMEs. But I'll be again clear, they don't want a school to resell to an SME. They want the school to service the SME. They want the members of that hotel to come to the school to get the lobster and other training as well, you know? Yeah, fine. Uh, as you know, we, we're still with uh, Education Institute. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're still working on books, although Ed tells us now we go on to e learning maybe very soon. But the, the, the reality is, I would call it in the old days, and maybe Matt is much younger than I am, there's lesson plans. Uh, mm -hmm. I would call it lesson plans with visuals now and enforcement. Um, and, and I think it's, it, I've, I've watched some of the stuff and I've seen some of the stuff in the, in the big branded hotels and what have you, and some of it is quite, quite interesting. So generically, I think it's a good addition to your, your resource pool. And we're getting away from paper now, all of us, and we're now becoming digitalized every way we look. So yeah, it's, I, I think it's a good relationship. The, the, the question is, my final question is, will it come from Hosco via Lobster Inc or Lobster Inc via Hosco? So Hosco not only is the distributor, but also the manager of the relationship, right? So it will come from Hosco, but we'll get it from Lobster Inc. Right. Okay. So what we, when the school says we want it or the association says we want it, we quantify the number of licenses required. We decide on the price and we send the license codes out to the school. School pays Hosco, license codes are delivered. License codes are then distributed to learners by the school. Yeah. That's fine. All right, well done. Thanks, John. Thanks, Matt. And Ray, of course, you may not be at another meeting for hosting it. You're a Cree. Thank you. Thank Mike. you, Mike. John, there is a, there's a comment from or a chat from uh, Chris as well. You want to have a look at? Can you see it? Um, oh, sorry, that's me. Uh, let's see, Chris. Uh, so Chris says, looks like a commercial resource, especially the videos, more so when the content delivery is co-curated content where the faculty provider is integrally involved in using the contents and recreating into a hybrid content. Well, just a nice comment. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris, you wanna elaborate on that anymore? Um, well, I, I was 
under the impression that I think it's a thanks thanks again a fantastic presentation um great great sales pitch uh, by the way um <laughs> I, I I think it's is it's a um, a great resource um and if the if the um, provider or the trainer or the instructor can actually uh, look at the material and then see where the individual's provision is, whether it's a hotel, hotel uh, in the in the sense or a, a institution, um, and then build using the material that the that the faculty member a trainer has, incorporating your material, then it makes better sense. I think there's a danger where um, you know, institutions might subscribe to this fantastic resource of yours, provide the the, uh, the the learning experience, but actually might not have anybody in house to actually do the follow ups. I think there's a danger of that happening. <laughs> the, the other one, which I mean, at the end of the day, I think one of the things I I fear some from from such provide provisions is that there's a standardized version of uh, learning across the board, whether it's batch with uh, University A or, or, or Institution B or whatever, there's this box, there's, there's this concern I have where mm -hmm. everyone has, has gone through the same mill. Mm -hmm. And then, although it's a high quality mill that you have at the end of the day, but at the same time, it's like whether you go into a, a five-star hotel or a three-star or a two-star, uh, you still have the same experience, and, and I think sometimes some people, not all of, not all, but some people might not be able to um, have their own initiative and and create a differentiation. Uh, you know, there's a danger where you go, where you see, wow, this is great service, but then you go to another one, and say, oh, this is uh, hmm, interesting, it's the same service I'm getting, <laughs> and and although it's great service, but then. Um, you know, if you if you went to a Swiss university or you went to a, a, a local college, you want to. I think either provider would like to have something that differentiates it. And sometimes, seeing the same content, there's a high danger that that whether I went to a paid fantastic amount of fees for for one provider and I paid a lower fee for something else, I still get the same similar. Mm -hmm. similar content, similar service. And I think there's a danger for that. But other than that, I think it's a fantastic, if, if, if somebody can can look at the portfolio of, of content that you have and then um, pick and choose, mix and match yes. the right package, I think the, it, it, it adds value to the, into the career, especially for those of us who may not have uh, access to a particular uh, training session or whatever that you have on your video. And that would be good. I think, but you know, there's a there's a huge danger. I can see some people uh, I may may be aware of that that might just buy wholesale, and yeah. then mix and match and deliver, but which actually has no no follow up from the institution. I think that's that's a danger for that. But that's that's me being uh, on the on a very cold December morning. <laughs> <laughs> and what institute are you at, Chris? If I can ask. Uh, I'm semi-retired. I'm just being a curious observer. I, I've been about uh, 50, 20 years in the university in the UK, um, uh, formerly with uh, uh, East London, but now with uh, Bristol University. But uh, this is just being me being, because as, as, as um, you know, especially if you look at uh, publishing houses, uh, that, that they have their own complementary material. And I've seen places where, uh, you, you know, uh, lecturers or whatever tend to just use wholesale complementary yeah, materials they take that the PowerPoint they take the CD and they yeah. just yeah. and, and then they just deliver and there's a danger for that I think that and then there's and then your type of resource also so I think it, it helps when when the individual provider or the instructor can actually co-curate yeah. the material and not take it wholesale and I think there's a danger for that happening in provisions like yours like this it's great but it, there's, I think it's a, a concern for that, that side of things. I think that's, that's why, uh, you know, it's, and, and sometimes the individual user, end user, can't differentiate between one and the other. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's, that's the danger for that side. So, yeah, it's, it's a great resource. I mean, it, but like all resources, it, yeah. it can only be better if it's well, well managed on both mm -hmm. sides. And you make some valid points. And, and I'm, again, I'm very early in this academic discovery of integration. But one thing I've been telling the faculty immediately is it's not a replacement. 
This is no, a supplement. No. This no. is a supplement. And it's also not really an in-class thing either. This mm. should more be less be something. We talked about food and beverage service standards. Mm. I told you my experience. You looked at various case studies, but I also want you now to go and do uh, an hour of, on the lobstering course mm -hmm. within your own free time, right? That's actually the more applicable way as I see using it. And there's some areas where it just won't fit at all. Like I said, more into the theory of hospitality. It isn't covered. It's a very vocational, very skills-based training. Fair do, fair do. Yeah. And, and like, like, like most, I have a friend of mine back home in Malaysia where um, he, he's providing training courses for the hospitality side in East Asia, uh, in ASEAN countries. At the same time, he, I think he will welcome such a, a resource, but I, but I, I think in my in my interaction with him, he tends to just use his own experience yeah. rather than have this. And I'll 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 share this clip with him and, and see and let him or let him see what he, he thinks of this. Um, and, and but I think cost wise and also um, I think depending like I'm sure you have experienced this. I think in different institutions, different parts of the world. Uh, yes. Provision, providing that, that vocational provision um, varies in terms of um, perception and also uptake. Yeah. That, that part there is, is important also. And yourself being in UK, it, it, it's similar to the US market, right? Mm -hmm. I've had yeah. uh, talks about seven or eight ICRI schools. Then I also had a couple of talks with ICRI uh, community colleges. The mm -hmm. community colleges saw an immediate fit. They, yeah. they just said, this is what we do. This reinforces what we do. At the university level, the highest interest was again on the internship piece. And in mm -hmm. some particular faculty, because they're all different, right? They needed yeah. a more vocational element of learning about luxury standards because they had a luxury hospitality management class. But my early indications are, and what I've told Lobsterine, because it's also new for them in this market, is a standalone hotel school is the most applicable fit, like a Swiss hotel school, or German, yeah. French, Italian, et cetera. After that, a community-based college, either US or UK, and after that, a department of hospitality, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably correct, but we're trying to approach all different markets yeah. Yeah. and in different regions and with also different pricing. The 100 euros is where it starts, but of course we can't offer 100 euros to our partners in Africa. It's just yeah. not feasible, it's not viable. So I we know. make sure that there's adjustment for each region. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a great resource, I, I, but I, I still think it can only add value when the provider or the instructor is comfortable in his, in, his, in his or her own skin to be able to use your material. That, boy, that's, that, that would be my only reservation. That is that. so right. And that's where I'm learning the hard way that, uh, you know, the dean can say, I like it, but I'm going to give it to the faculty. And some faculty are, it's great. Some faculty are like, I have no interest whatsoever. So it's a very much one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one basis on how they could or won't use it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure, I mean, taking uh, Matt's view, uh, director of education in that sense, I think sometimes, you know, it, it'd be quite interesting to find out. It's not, not. Um, I, I mean, I'm an external exam I was an external examiner at a Swiss university for hospitality for some years ago. But the thing is that not every faculty member has hands-on experience from industry. Some come straight through from a scholarly route into post and they might not have the, um, might not have the experience, so yeah. for just a better word, of hands-on part that your video seems to show. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes to, to, to provide that scholarly stroke vocational inter um, interaction, um, it's always a hard, hard, hard time, always hard, difficult thing to do. You know, and, and from an academic perspective, you, you, you can appreciate that the uh, the scholarly uh, band yardsticks that we have to, to to adhere to in terms of publications and and things exactly. like that sometimes is slightly disjointed from uh, the realities of, of uh, vocation in terms of so I mean I'm associate editor of one of the uh, IQ journals um, but you know so sometimes you you can see the <laughs> the friction yeah. yeah. Uh, in that sense. So I think it's a great resource. Uh, I still think that you, you uh, I think the hybrid model is the best, the, the best output from a uh, student perspective um, yeah. and also from a, a, an educational perspective. Great, great presentation, honestly, great, great sales. You yeah. know? Chris, I think you're going to be the host of the next one and we're going to talk about the academic 
and classroom dilemma, right? <laughs> I, I think well, that, that's, uh, this this Zoom fatigue. I think although, although Zoom is great, but I think you you can you can switch off uh, like I have in 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 some uh, earlier earlier during your session. I've been listening, but I've been I mean yeah. I do other things, but. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's actually more draining. I find it more draining than, than in the room seminars. You can be in the room and doze off, I suppose. But at the same time on the Zoom, you can also switch off in, and look at, at other things. But <laughs> when you actually engage, I, I'm not sure how Matt feels, but I think when you actually stare in the face all the time for that for the 45 minutes, one hour, 90 minutes duration, it's actually quite tiring at the end yeah. of the day. I don't know how you all manage it, but I feel sometimes <laughs> it's quite tiring. <laughs> Yeah, you just have anyway, to keep a brave face. face. Yeah. Thank Great. you, Chris. We have a question from Sam as well before we wrap up the whole uh, little session. Sam, do you want to tell us or is it possible? Or can you read it, John? I'll read it. Sure. I'll read it for you, Sam. No worries. Sam asks, when do we get tourism related content? There is no doubt an excellent solution to professional training, especially in regions where tourism hospitality training is developing with limited practical infrastructure. So the answer to your question, Sam, is it's already there, but we're not yet licensed to use it. Yeah. So there is not a huge amount, but a decent amount from Forbes Travel. So Forbes Travel, a long time ago, I think about seven or eight years ago, licensed Lobster Inc. to create various tourism training content based on Forbes best practices, knowledge and content, right? But it's licensed exclusively to Forbes. So basically you can buy it through them, but you can't buy it through Hosco. We're however talking to Lobster Inc to make it available also on the platform. Um, the catch, I don't know precisely, but I believe it's about the same price for maybe a quarter of the entire content, 15, maybe 20 hours of learning. So. If you want tourism content, it's absolutely available, but you have to go to Forbes to get it at this current point. Sam, can't quite hear you. Can you come a bit closer to the microphone? No, that's just, that is fair enough. We'll wait for it. Yeah, you know, and, and I think related to tourism, especially in Kenya, because tourism is so unique in a both a cultural historical uh, perspective, I think it'd be amazing to have a Kenyan tourism program, a Kenyan tourism course developed and then maybe shared on Love Shrink in that kind of brand environment. Because, you know, if we have young students from all those numerous schools in Kenya learning about tourism, yes, it's good to have the general best practices, but they should also know, they should also know how to promote their local tourism and the best practices to do that because it is a major brand to sell, you know, across the world. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Any more questions or uh, doesn't look like it. So I'd like to say thank you for all, to all of you for participating and especially thanks to John. Really interesting presentation and I'm very sure we're gonna see and hear more from you in the future. And we're all very curious and following what's happening in this area. So thank, thank you very much and thank you all for, for joining us. And, uh, Till next time, we'll have a next seminar. Thank you, Eurocrete. Thank you. Thank you, Eurocrete.